Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again. It's time for Birthday Gifts Part 2. And there will be a Part 3. So, not that I got so many gifts, but I am trying to make the video shorter and tell us a little more story. Um, so, the first half was mostly most of the kids at what I got that I post already. And then there were... Uh, there was a shopping trip that my wife took me on, which is what we're going to talk about today. And then a couple of my other kids bought me gift cards, which I did finally get a chance to go use. So that'll be another video. So my wife decided to take me, even though she had already kind of made me splurge at our previous trip down to, you know, North Carolina and stuff. But so she said, well, let's go. She took me to the one store in our local area that sells the, they sell a lot of stuff, but they're the only store that does sell those unofficial releases. Now I went there because I know there was one unofficial release that I knew was out. I assumed they would have, and I have seen, um, JC showed it a couple, well, probably by now a couple weeks ago. So I went there anticipating, hopefully, hope fully finding that and I did and that's dysfunctional by docking not sure if these would ever be reissued some of the docking catalog that came after this has been I assume somewhat officially reissued on Vi uh, Night of the Vinyl Dead a couple of them after this I don't know if these will ever come out officially this these are those 90s years this one in Shadow Life in my opinion, we're always kind of the oddities because they definitely were 90s and it seemed like the band was trying to go a little more alternative. Uh, but I, you know, I go back and I listen to this this week and it's really, you know, I mean, it, I remember liking it at the time it came out. I mean, in hindsight, it may definitely fit differently, you know, because shortly after this, the albums that came after this, when Red Beats joined, very much went back to a classic sound. Um, these have George Lynch, but they're a little, you know, they're just a little different sounding. Um, this is a double record set. It's on a green transparent that kind of matches a green in the cover there. It's a double single, not gatefold, just double. The back is def is just a, literally a scan of the CD. It's got the CD barcode. It's actually the same CD that I got, same barcode and everything. And it is a double record set. There's no inserts or anything, so it's pretty plain Jane, typical uh, unofficial type release. And so I went ahead and picked that up. Now I kept looking and I saw that they had this, which I was not expecting. And that's the self-titled Rat album. Uh, and I thought, well, yeah, you know, uh, again, I don't know if the later stuff, you know, the box set came out and covered all the Atlantic year stuff uh, or yeah. And, um, and then, you know, I don't know if any of the stuff in between that and infestation will ever get released. I'm hoping they'll reissue it, but at this point they haven't. So I thought, yeah, whatever. Why not? on a yellow pretty bright yellow insert is pretty generic it actually has the ep cover on it which is kind of dumb and then the photo on the back is totally not the same band the photo on the back is not the band on the album so again just kind of thrown together no inserts no credits or anything like that sounds good though i'm sure it's just a digital transfer but it's kind of fun and sounds good and then this one they had which i'm glad because it's the only one left that i needed um, and so I went ahead and got it, and that's KFD by Wasp. Now, this was issued on vinyl in 2015, another unofficial pressing. It was a double record set. It had some live stuff on it, and from what all I've heard, it sounded horrible. Now, the album already sounds rough because this is the album where he went kind of like cyber, strange, industrial, noisy sound in general. And so the album itself already sounds kind of rough. But I hear that those 2015 vinyl pressings were just horrible. And so I, you know, what I kind of went, I'd like to kind of have one only because they were double record set with some bonus live tracks. But, you know, if they sounded really bad, then I didn't really want them. Well, then this came out again, I guess in 2022 or 2023, because when I got all of the other Wasp ones, the Neon, God, all that, all those ones, uh, you know, after, well, still not black enough. In that general time frame, last, like early last year, all of those came out. And I asked about this and the guy at the store said, yeah, that one came out. I had somehow missed it. It came out a couple months prior and had come and gone. Well, this is another, another repressing of it for 2024. So white single album, just the cover, just the songs, just a photocopy blurry photocopy the inside cover has interesting michael myers half of michael myers on one side and his mask on the other 
and it just says KFD in light letters. It's, you know, kind of generic. But again, you know, I listened to it and it sounds like the CD would. So it wasn't like it was, I don't find it to be any rougher. Like it's a bad vinyl pressing. But again, unofficial release is kind of a novelty placeholder until the officials come out. The, um, I think that is the final Wasp album, studio album on vinyl to fill all the holes that I have. So yeah, you know, a handful of them are on official releases, but yeah, kind of fun. Anyway, that's it. So my wife took me there. That was enough. I'm like, I don't want to spend more. They had both, all three Badland albums, uh, unofficial releases and, and the, you know, the demos one that's been flown out there for a while, but they had all three of the studio albums. Um, but you know, they had the kicks album. They had some of the ones that have been out for a little while, uh, that I would love to have, but didn't pull the trigger on. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this one though. Thanks a lot for watching. Rock on and rock hard.